Howdy doody, uh, welcome to my Kickstarter page. My name is Barry Lewis. I am in my car because I was gonna take you along my beach. This is a very nice sort of scenic beach near where I live, but it's, it's England and it's extremely, extremely windy here. Um, I do uh, cooking videos on the internet. I've been doing it for about seven, eight years now. I love doing recipes primarily, but I like to laugh and learn and teach people how to cook. Uh, and testing kitchen gadgets is one of my most popular videos that I like to do. I like to review gadgets. I like to help people with disabilities and find ways to make cooking more accessible. And for the last two years, as I say, I've been putting together uh, this thing called a veggie prep kit, which I finally released last week. I also released some baking mats and I have a cake stand that's about to come out too and the aim was to slowly add uh, more and more products like slowly is the key word I teased this idea for so long and they finally got them out and basically every penny I had to put into the stock for the resources to do it I, I did uh, and and basically within five hours in the UK and the US these these all sold out it's like my followers my friends they're like I really want to support you I want to get one of these and I can't so I was given this really good suggestion to launch a Kickstarter campaign where basically one of these veggie prep kits is a perk. So if you want one, uh, just literally order it up and then I know how much stock I can get. I'm trying to work out a way that I can send it to different countries rather than just sticking it on US and UK Amazon. There's a few people that want to help me do that. But whatever happens, I just know that my, I've got enough stock. So I'm not in this situation where I'm running out of this stuff again because I feel really, really bad about it. But my aim here is to get as many veggie prep kits out as I can and just cover my costs, basically. Um, I'm not wanting to go viral or any crazy stuff like that. I'd love to take on the big boys, of course. But baking mats, I've got enough of these. I'll be okay with those. It's just to cover the cost of these. It's really scary. I'm not a huge business. I'm just like a one-man band doing this as best as I can. And I am just absolutely astonished by the feedback and response. I was hoping to sell maybe 20% when I first launched it and it blew up. So please check out the perks down below. I mean, they're pretty much, the perks are the products. It just means that I can pay for them. You can get it and hopefully one day we can be look back and go, wow, we made this epic brand because that's that's really the aim. I want to like release the world's best, most heavily tested products that I can and keep evolving, adapting it and even create some for people that have disabilities. There's a massive market there for people that can get into the kitchen with just simple tools that can help them. And I want to help them. And that's what I do already like accidentally on my videos, but I want to put it on a shelf and you can help me. So consider pledging. Thanks for the uh, putting up with the steamed up car. It's like a scene from Titanic, set them on my own. <laughs> Check it out, thanks. So this is my main kit that I'm bringing out first of all. I aim to do more kits like baking kits and things like that and you would not believe the effort I've gone to to make this thing. When it came to sourcing these products, all the ones you've seen today, the reason it's probably taken so long as well, I have three very simple rules. One, it had to be a product that if I said that I would use, that I literally would use and endorse. I'm not gonna say, oh, I like that and never use it. I literally tested these hard. Two, it had to feel like good quality, sturdy, safe, and trust that there's some really, I'll come on to it in a minute, some really bad ones out there. Three, where the product was sourced from, whether it was in England, some in London, uh, some in India, some in Europe, some in America, some Australia, some in uh, China, wherever it came from, that the manufacturer had an awesome reputation and that they actually sourced it as environmentally friendly as possible. Those three things were massive to me. Like even using recycled goods like meant a lot and <laughs> like I told you about the garage, like with the silicon mats there. I just want to show you this back here. In th all these boxes, there are over 25 different veggie choppers and spiralizers and things that I've been looking at going, right, what would make the ultimate kit that I would be happy to sell? I've got a few to show you, hang on. There was this spir look, <laughs> spiralizer kit that just felt so dangerous. Bits would fall out of it. You try and spiralize and it didn't have any grippers on the bottom, so you'd be trying to push it along and it would just like, rather than stay, it would just slide off. I had this thing called a drum grater, which a lot of you messaged me still on Instagram, tagging me in these videos going, oh, look at this. This thing was so bad. Like you'd put, like the, the handle was so flimsy and it's just, it just feels really cheap and it, it had no strength whatsoever. For herbs, you had to push it down. You could use this to get it down, but other bigger things, it just didn't do it. And that was when I realized I needed something a bit more substantial. 
There was this one that came from London. I was like, oh, wow, it's British supply. It's going to be great. And it was actually lethal. There was one of the blades here. Was it six? That's why it's upside down. I, I don't know if you remember, there was a scar on my finger there. And a video for a few weeks, I had a plaster there. That was what did it. I opened the packaging and it was exposed. The blade was loose on it. I'm still talking to that company, but not about using them. And there was this one as well that came that was just so clunky. There was another bit with it that I actually physically snapped when I used it. It's not very non-slip. And this bit here, you can't remove the lid off to use some other functions, which with the one I've got, you can do it all together. I found one that works. I might just have to do a video reviewing every single one of those on another day because they were just like so dangerous. Some of them I was like, you cannot sell that. And I will not put my name to it. Ultimately, I was trying to source something for my veggie kit that I could say, look, hey, if you get this, you can basically prepare and chop and slice nearly every vegetable you can think of and fruits. There are some others that are gonna need a teeny bit of help, but it will get you by and just give you a kickstart in the kitchen. Now the box has got a bit damaged because I've been opening and showing friends and family so much, but there's so much in here. <laughs> There's also an instruction manual as well, but hey, you know I don't use those. You probably can't see much difference between these two, but I had 10 different garlic peelers sent to me. This one's slightly glossier looking, but when you try and use it, for some reason it just doesn't work. So I had to find one that works an absolute charm. So that's, well, that's in there. This one isn't. It's not a dog toy. So actually what I think I'll do is start with the garlic thing. This has been one of my favorite things of all time that I've shown in previous videos, a garlic rocker. So in the veggie prep pack comes an actual garlic tube so you can roll and peel your garlic and then chop it easily and scoop it off. The two combos together, absolutely love, and they will be available separately, but as a kit, first of all. I wasn't planning on putting one of these in there, but from a result of my testing, I was like, do you know what? The anti-cut gloves that I had in one of my gadget videos, I'm gonna shove one of those in there just so that when you're using one of these, I mean, it doesn't have to be with a peeler, but maybe when you're doing something like the Julienne stuff, just for added security and peace of mind, just to use that on the cut in hand, it makes you feel a bit better, or like a mime artist. When it comes to peelers, there's two of those in a pack, Barry Lewis ones like that, and I had to pick some of these that are nice and lightweight, but a big, thick, chunky handle. You've got a standard one, and then you've got one that spiralizes. You can just take the cap off a bit like a razor, and then you got that. I just love this, really good for salads and stuff, where you just get nice, thin, matchstick carrots. And the cool thing I like is when you're not using it, you just sort of push that back on, lift that up, click it into place, and it's nice and safe in your drawer. Cool stuff. But that and a standard peeler, same method, is there. This was what I liked about my kit. Oh, and they Barry Lewis on it, of course, but it was just sturdy, it felt good quality, non-slip, really good non-slip on the bottom of it as well, and it was just enough. It wasn't overkill with too many blades sticking out everywhere. It can get you by, and also, it's got a lid. So I'll come on to that in a minute, what you can do. It's just something as simple as a lid is my life now. If you remember the uh, paprika chicken video I did, the Alton Brown one where I put a potato on there and then you run it up and down to slice the potatoes, that is phenomenal. Julienne in potatoes. There is another brush that comes with it as well to clean it, to get it out of all these bits. But in fact, you might remember the original gadget video I discovered one of these um, and it was just basically a potato slicer. So you've got your, like, your main body bit here, and what you do, you unclip down the bottom. That's what I liked about it. Other ones were welded, so you had other bits, but you can interchange it. So you push these bits together, you sit your other bit in. See, this is your gripper, okay? So that's gonna grip the vegetable. And then you just pick whichever one you want, click it into place. Don't know how satisfying that click was when I discovered it. The one thing I will say with these things is to get the most out of them, as I've put in the manual, you really need to just give it a little bit of help. So, I mean, to halve an onion just like this, rather than putting a whole onion in, or ideally quartering it can help you massively. Putting it in there, straight down, boom. Look at that, straight through. It's nice and strong. It feels light, but you just need to help it. And you can just take that off, stick your lid on. I get really excited about the lid. Put it in your fridge and carry on with your life. I mean, that's the whole thing with it. You've got to love it and it will love you back. If you start putting whole like whole vegetables on it, it'll be like, nah, I'm not gonna be your friend. I'm not gonna last long. But things like just changing it to a thin strip one like that, getting a courgette or a zucchini and then just pushing it through like that. One of the softer vegetables, easy peasy. Slices. Mushrooms, you don't even need to worry about them. They just go straight down. It's just like, yeah, cool. Okay, so say rather than doing the handheld spiralizer thing, you want to do like some slices. You've got two different ones here. You've got one with a, a straight blade or one with actual segments, which will do the strips like the carrot. So let's do that one actually. It just pops in like so, straight there. 
And then from you, <laughs> obviously you're not gonna have a carrot like that, but you can just twist it straight into the base. You see the bits of carrot coming through? Awesome. Then again, you just pop that out. Say you wanna do some slicing again. Push this bit out as well. Push that back in so that's in place. You see what I mean? It just feels firm and safe. I didn't get that with a lot of them. And the cool thing is you can actually have it other ways around. So if you prefer to go one way rather than the other, you just got to make sure that you line up your two bits with it. That's it. <laughs> oh, this bit is actually what should have gone, you know, when I just did the carrot by hand and made a carrot crayon. Uh, that's what would normally go into there or your, you know, your back of your courgette like that and just spin that way. But doing it by hand is quite fun. You can see how the blade is facing that way though. If I want it so it's facing this way, and whenever I'm doing the thin slice thing, I would put the glove on 100%. But you can get something like your courgette, pierce it on, and then just go up and down. So use your non-covered hand to hold it and support the base. And the slicey one is where you've got your glove, all right? I haven't looked, but I can feel that it's getting lower. You know, you might want to pick it up. You might just want to walk around with it, be like, hello? Yeah, cool. But seriously though, I mean, you might be the most confident person in the world, wherever you can, if you do want to put a glove on like that just to protect you, you should hopefully, well hey, end up with really nice thin courgette. And that's the basics of the veggie prep kit. There's like a grating attachment that goes on there as well. You can get around and you chop and prepare so many vegetables. I'm not saying don't do this instead of basic knife skills, but when you're in a hurry, particularly with kids for us, making a ratatouille, which is what we're gonna have tonight, something like that, boom, 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 easy peasy.